It's a wonderful day today and we're reading some more Am I the Gay Hole? Gonna make the day even better and I'm so excited. I hope you guys are doing great and I hope you're having a good day. And let's get into it. Enjoy, guys. Am I the a-hole for trying to take back 80,000 of the 160,000 that my spouse spent behind my back? My husband spent 160 grand investing in baseball cards without telling me. Oh my god. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but that's unbelievable. During this same time, he would get mad at me for spending money on meal plans or salon services. I would get yelled at for my disrespectful spending and my financial goals not aligning with his, so he'd say. He did most of this spending on his personal credit card that he paid for with our joint account. For a long time, I didn't have access to our online banking so I didn't see the amounts that he was paying in his credit card. Whenever I would question a $2 or a $4,000 payment, he would have some excuse and say that it was on the family or groceries. He would refuse to show me his statements. Okay, so I know we only just started this one, but how are you going to be the a-hole in this OP? One time driving to lunch, he mentioned how my friends owed him for the concert tickets I had to use his card to buy. I agreed to get the money from them. In mentioning the card though, I remember just seeing another $4,000 payment come out of our joint account. This was after two months ago when he promised he had a $2,000 balance and he was going to pay it off and stop using it. So I asked him. I thought it was going to be paid off a couple of months ago. That was all it took. He launched into me about how I ruin everything. We can't just enjoy the day. This is why my relationships never work. On and on and then dropped me back off at our house and left. It was this outburst that made me realize there was more going on. Yeah, definitely. After lots of back and forth and digging and finally getting him to give me access to his credit card statements, I added up $160,000 in three years that he spent. I already realized the financial abuse that's taken place on many levels levels and there's so much I'm not including. During all of this, my husband met up with a divorce lawyer and then begged me for another chance. That was about a year ago. We are still together, but as you can imagine, the financial issues are only one of many issues that we have. At the time, I realized what he had spent and that I was so ill-prepared for a divorce, I started transferring money from my joint account to my personal every month. My goal over time is to take my half back, 80000 and invest it how I want to. He was of course mad, but I pretty much said, oh well. He should have considered me when he spent it and I was only correcting it wrong. Recently, he made sure that the money wasn't in the account when my transfer was scheduled. He did this two months in a row and said I could no longer do this. I waited for the money to be there and I did the transfer anyway. He went nuts, telling me I'm a rat. He's selling the house, dissolving our business. He said it's wrong for me to go tit for tat and that I should let it go. The money's just sitting in my account as I haven't spent any of it. Am I the a-hole for trying to take my half back over time? Nah, you're not the a-hole OP, but don't stay with somebody who calls you a rat. Oh my god, that's so awful. But yeah, of course you're not the a-hole OP. The top comment says, Info, have you actually seen this baseball card collection? I mean, it sounds like he was spending it on other stuff. In addition, I would insist on the receipts, not just the credit card. I'd Google the business on the CC as it sounds like he was spending it elsewhere. Aside from that, dump him. Claw back your money in the divorce and live a better life. I all but guarantee that his divorce consultant told him that you wouldn't pay him alimony and that you had grounds for financial abuse and mental cruelty. Not the a-hole. And OP said, yeah, the cards are everywhere. Organized in sleeves and boxes. He has many of them PSA graded. I checked all the companies on the statements I was unsure of. Most were grading companies or sellers. Wow, imagine spending 160 grand on graded baseball cards out of a joint account that you have with your partner. How could they ever feel like they did the right thing? That's awful. And yeah, of course you're not the a-hole OP. Post number two is called, am I the a-hole for telling my brother that he's gonna be a crap dad? I 30 male was at my brother's 34 male house when my sister-in-law, 31 female, went into labor. They live in the countryside, so the signal isn't too great sometimes unless they walk up the lane. So my brother was supposed to take her to the hospital instead of calling an ambulance, but for some bloody reason, he decided to freak out and drive off somewhere. I can't drive, so I ran up the lane to call 999. It took forever to get signal, and then took forever for the ambulance to get to the house. I almost had to deliver the baby, for God's sake. She ended up giving birth in the back of an ambulance. This whole time, my brother had just disappeared. He finally turned up at the hospital about eight hours after he disappeared. Apparently, he'd gone to our dad's house until our dad found out that my sister-in-law gave birth and made my brother go see her. I yelled at him outside the hospital for being so bloody stupid. He told me that he just got scared and he didn't know what to do. I told him he's going to be a crap dad if he keeps reacting like this. What's he going to do when the kid gets injured and it's his responsibility to take him to A&D? Is he just going to dump the kid and run off to dad's again? He's such an idiot. He started crying and called me a twat for being so mean to him. I just lost it with him. He was acting like a child when he should have been comforting his wife and apologizing to her for being a ding dong. He called me a C word and told me that I don't understand what he's feeling. I get that he was scared but he seriously needs to get a grip and help his wife. 
am I the a-hole? Right, okay, so when I read the title of this, it did sound pretty bad. I was thinking, you know, maybe they are the a-hole for telling their brother they're gonna be a crap dad. But in this context, I don't feel like you're the a-hole, OP. You're completely right. He does need to be comforting his wife. Imagine how his wife felt. The top comment says, in my personal opinion, you're not the a-hole. I get that becoming a parent is a huge thing, that even if you do think you're ready, you'll never truly be. But he just disappeared for eight hours while his wife was in labor. What if there were complications? What if you weren't home in the moment she went into labor? He needs to get his crap together and seek therapy. If his response to stress is to run away, leaving his wife in a potentially harmful situation, and she needs to rethink their relationship if he doesn't. And Opie said thank you, and yeah, he was lucky that I was there. Because if I wasn't, she would have had to do all of this by herself. Like what type of husband just leaves his wife when she needs him the most? What the hell? Yeah, definitely, OP. I can't even imagine how the wife felt. Oh, that's so sad. And they're not going to forget that. Like, oh, yeah, my husband disappeared when I needed him because I was giving birth to our child. That's terrible. Like, that attitude is so wild. Like him saying he just got scared and didn't know what to do. Bro, you know who would be more scared? Your wife who's giving birth and you just run off. Yeah, nah, that's so bad. I feel like what you said is justified, OP. The next one is called, Am I the gay hoffer telling my sister-in-law that her family can't stay at my beach house anymore, even though they did help build it? I'm 31 and my husband is 38. We live about three hours away from my sister-in-law's family, her, her husband, and two kids. A few years ago, my husband and I bought a really rundown property on the coast, a couple of hours away from where we live. I wanted to make a project of fixing it up. My husband liked the idea and was happy to support it, but it was mainly my project. I really put a lot of effort into fixing it as cheaply as possible. I went over and stayed there for many nights and I literally did a lot of construction. My husband came and helped about half the time. I sourced recycled wood and such, so almost all of the materials are found in some way. Once it was partially finished, I thought I could enlist my sister-in-law's help. So I told her about this project and I asked her if she wanted to come stay for a few days with her family and help finish up the work. She brought her kids and husband and slept on the deck and did things like painting and building some furniture. When it was done, it was really beautiful. We started renting it out on Airbnb and we have had some good success with it so far. I did say that my sister-in-law's family could come and stay anytime because they were helping with it. There's two parts of the house that have separate kitchens and bathrooms. So we've kept the top for us and sister-in-law's family and the bottom for Airbnb. Last week they were there at the same time as some paid guests. I got a complaint from the guests afterward that my sister-in-law's kids had made fun of their kids and that my sister-in-law told them that this was their house so the guests don't get to dictate how their kids behave. I asked my sister-in-law about it and she said that their kids wanted to play with the guest kids on the beach and the guest kids tried to ask her kids to leave them alone and they wouldn't. They were playing volleyball and her kids were much better and rightfully proud of it. I got pissed off and I told her she wasn't allowed to stay there anymore when she can't be considerate of the fact that this is also a business and she can't be an ass to customers or anyone. Now she says I'm an a-hole because I promise she could stay anytime. Nah, you're not the a-hole OP. Like yeah, you said that they could stay, assuming that they're not going to be a-holes to the guests. It's a consequence of their actions and that's all it is. They messed around and they found out. Like that's so not okay and they could definitely give your Airbnb like a bad reputation and you do not need that OP. Like yeah, you said they could stay anytime, but obviously if they're being rude to the other people who are staying there, you're not going to let them stay there. They're acting like even though they did the wrong thing, that you need to absolutely stick to what you said. The fact that they were being a-holes doesn't make you the a-hole OP. The top comment says, I did say that my sister-in-law's family could stay anytime because they did help with it. Yeah, a deal is a deal until I got a complaint from the guests afterward that my sister-in-laws had made fun of their kids and that my sister-in-law told them that it was their house so the guests don't get to dictate how their kids behave. This entitlement mentality breaks deals. Your sister-in-law behaved badly and now your Airbnb could possibly get a bad review involving the house owner's kids interfering with their vacation. Who's going to want to stay in a place like that? Your sister-in-law took liberties that any normal person would know is a step too far. Yeah, that's a really good point. Who the hell would want to stay there? Like imagine you stay somewhere and there are people upstairs that are super rude and entitled. And yeah, that's right. They will leave a bad review and then people aren't going to stay there. And the audacity for the sister-in-law to say, oh, well, it's my house. So you guests don't get to dictate how our kids behave. That's so bad. And yeah, don't let them back in there, OP. You're not the a-hole. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for naming my son after my father instead of my father-in-law? I, 26 female, recently had twins with my husband, Harry, 30 male. I love my baby so much, but the labor was a nightmare. It was extremely traumatic for my husband and I, and we've agreed that we're definitely not having any more kids. I was laboring for two days, and during the process, we kept our families updated. When they were finally able to visit, my parents and my in-laws came to see us. Everybody was fussing over the babies, and my poor husband, who only had about four hours of sleep for the whole two days, was napping. My dad, however, sat by me first and just held my hand for a bit. When I told him to go get some cuddles in with the twins, he said, I'm here to see my baby, meaning me. It was so sweet, and I started tearing up. I didn't even realize how invisible I felt when my husband was sleeping. And my 
dad was there to make sure that I was being taken care of. He took me down to the hospital cafe and we had breakfast together while the babies were with everybody else. I kept on thinking about what my dad did for the next few days and I decided that I'd give my newborn son my father's name as his middle name. My husband was totally on board with this. However, this is where the problem began. We knew my father-in-law would be pretty pissed off at this. He always wanted a grandson named after him but it was pretty clear now that he won't get one. He has two sons, my husband and his younger brother and my brother-in-law is gay and currently says that he doesn't want to adopt kids in the future. My father-in-law is also one of those people who cares about bloodlines so I don't think he'd want an adopted grandson named after him. Messed up, I know. My husband has a complicated relationship with his father so he wasn't comfortable naming our son after him but we agreed to give them the same initials so they'd both be AHD. He accepted this but when he found out that we were switching the middle name for my father, he lost his mind. He said that this was something he always wanted and we were throwing it in his face by giving the baby my father's name as his middle name. I tried to explain why but he cut me off and said that it was absurd to expect somebody to check on me when there were babies that had just been born and my father shouldn't be rewarded for ignoring his grandchildren. Oh, get out of here dude. I tried to explain that it's more than just the moment because my dad has been my best friend for my whole life but he didn't want to hear it. Mother-in-law is saying that we're the a-holes because my dad doesn't care about any grandchildren being named after him but my father-in-law always wanted it. Yeah, but that's not the point. According to her, we're taking something away from him just because my dad chose to do something unusual which to them was ignoring the babies until he was satisfied with me being okay. He did not ignore the kids. He got plenty of cuddles in when we got back from breakfast. My dad is honoured by our choice but thinks that we shouldn't have done it because of what it means to father-in-law. Am I the a-hole? Why are they saying that it was unusual for your dad to check on you? There's nothing unusual about that. Your dad sounds like a legend, OP. And from just the in-laws reaction to this alone, they're showing plenty of red flags. And how bloody self-centred of the father-in-law too. You had this beautiful special moment with your dad and the father-in-law's like, oh nah, that's unusual. And saying that he was ignoring the kids and turning it into a negative thing. That says so much more about the father-in-law than it does about your dad, OP. Like it was a beautiful thing to you and they're completely dismissing that because they're hung up on the name. And like this comment says, my husband was totally on board with this. Not the a-hole. As far as I'm concerned, this is about where the story ends. You two name your child, not other people. Yeah, definitely. It's not up to them, OP. Even from how the in-laws reacted to this, I wouldn't want my kid to have the father-in-law's name as their middle name. Like why? So you can be reminded of how the father-in-law was acting? Yeah, no way. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for apparently making the wedding all about me by being difficult and not taking off work to go dress shopping? My son told me to come here. I'm on my phone. Background, I have to travel for my job Monday through Friday. I've been getting on a plane every Monday and getting back on Friday due to a project needing to be supervised. My future daughter-in-law works four days a week, Wednesday to Saturday, 10 hour shifts. She wants to meet up to get a dress for the wedding. She wants to be there when I get a dress. Originally, I was just going to wear the same dress I wear for all weddings, a long blue dress, but she wanted me to wear something else since it'll match her bridesmaids. So looking at our schedule, Sunday would be the best day to do this. We're both off. She told me no since that is her rest day. She asked me for Monday. I told her I can't and I have to work. Then I suggested Friday or Saturday after work. Those got shut down. She wants me to take off work. I then suggested that she sent me examples of what she wants and I'll shop by myself and I'll buy something like the examples. Also shut down. After much back and forth, I told her I'll just wear the blue dress. This started an argument and she called me a jerk. My son is mad that I'm making the wedding about me and not taking off work. I don't think I'm being unreasonable, but he told me to post here. Update, my son has the link. Anyways, he told me I can wear the blue dress and that I won't be an issue. No response from future daughter-in-law. Wow, that's so funny. <laughs> and yeah, pretty much everybody is saying not the a-hole. Like the top comment said, you've offered reasonable suggestions to make this work and she shot down each of them. That's not your fault. Why is she so invested in being there with you? Surely you can pick out a dress in a fit and style that would be appropriate and suitable. And OP said, I have no idea why she's so invested in this. I also don't get why she doesn't want me to wear my blue dress. The horror that I'm the same color as the bridesmaids. Like it's a dress. The wedding is in five months. Like yeah, you tried to reason with the OP. She said one day, you said no, I've got to work. You said another day, she said no, it's my rest day. You said, well, can you just tell me what you want and I can order it and they still said no like they can't be so stubborn on this and like yeah if they really don't want you to wear the blue dress like you said OP I suggested that she sent me examples of what she wants and I'll shop by myself and buy something like the examples but no she shut that down like you've been trying OP but they're being so stubborn yeah you're not the a-hole OP the next one is called am I the a-hole for telling my father I do know about that I female 28 am a wildlife biologist I have a master's degree in wildlife conservation and I am hoping to go for my doctorate soon I've worked in this field since I was 16 and I'm very passionate about it. When visiting my family recently for Easter, my mum asked me to tell the family a little bit about work. I was so excited to talk about my current research. Here's where the issue comes in though. My father, male 60, would respond to almost everything I said with, hmm, don't know about that. At first I tried to ignore it, but it just didn't stop. Eventually I responded,
responded, well, I do, given the two degrees and all. I responded in a light, playful tone, but he didn't take it well at all. He immediately accused me of being disrespectful. I responded, I'm sorry, but it's disrespectful of you to insinuate that you know more than I do about my field. Yeah, OP. Dinner got pretty quiet after that. I finished the meal, I helped with the dishes, and I said goodbye before leaving. But on the ride home, I got a phone call from my mother asking me why I felt the need to aggravate my father and why I had to talk back. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm a 28-year-old professional. This feels insane to me. Am I the a-hole? No way, OP. You're not the a-hole. And they can get out of here with that crap. Oh, why'd you have to aggravate your father and talk back? Your father was being rude and super disrespectful, OP. Of course you need to say something or talk back, making it sound like you're 10 years old. Yeah, you're definitely not the a-hole, OP. And the bloody audacity of your dad. Like, how rude. And I can only imagine how that makes you feel. Like, oh yeah, this is my profession and I know a lot about it and I'm passionate about it and I work really hard in it and dad doesn't even feel like I know what I'm talking about. That wouldn't be a good feeling. The top comment says, not the a-hole. You used a playful tone so you weren't confronting him in front of other people. He was being disrespectful to you to start with. Is this a pattern with him? And OP said, unfortunately, yeah. Which is why it's so hard to just ignore it as my mother suggests. Yeah, that sucks, OP. And you're definitely not the a-hole. And I feel like that's enough for today. We need to read something wholesome. Due to a shortage of robots, some of our staff are human and therefore react unpredictably when abused or under pressure. I love how blunt this is. Yeah, people that are rude to staff, I do not understand. <laughs> like, why? Like, yeah, they're human beings. They're not robots. Brian Ware founded the Crayon Initiative. After learning that restaurants get rid of all the crayons that kids leave behind on tables, he collects them, melts them down, creates new crayons that are thicker and easier to grasp for young children and kids with special needs, and then delivers them to local hospitals. Wow, Brian, you absolute legend. That's so awesome and such a good idea. Not only good on you for thinking about doing something like this, but good on you for actually doing it. That's amazing. Don't ever, 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 ever give up. You're here for a reason. Even if it's only to look at cats on the internet, you'll figure it out. Yeah, that's so true. And that's a beautiful place to end today's episode. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Hinata from a nice guy episode. Calling themselves a wolf among sheep is so funny because they're calling themselves a predator hiding amongst the vulnerable. Yeah, that's so true. Like they're literally calling themselves a bad person. I love making nice guy episodes, but they are so intense. But yeah, thank you for the support. It means so much to me. Okay, I'm out of here. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!